So I just want to show off a little something something with this wonderful, wonderful Epson printer. I've got my 7i96S Mesa card here. And I want to make a label for the input blocks here. I could actually make labels that stretch across the entire span because these are block sections of six. And with the software, if you've got an even number of blocks, you could just add block, add block, add block, add block, and then you can pretty much set it up the way that you need it. So, cold start for my nice new Lenovo ThinkPad. No special perks from these guys, but I, I did get a I did get an employee discount from uh, from my company, which was kind of cool. So I bought this as a I mean, as you can tell, I bought it as a development computer, music recording computer, uh, live streaming, video editing, <laughs> you name it. And I thought I found this wallpaper online. I thought this was very fitting because it's got the guitar. It's got food, and it's got a guy on a bicycle. And anybody that knows me, they know that I am a musician. I'm fat, but I love mountain biking. Oh, and and at one point I co-owned a restaurant. <laughs> so, uh, doing this from a cold startup. Not sure how successful I'm going to be doing this through Viewfinder, but we will find out. So I have the Epson label software already installed. Going to open it up. And when you have your label maker plugged in, it'll show you what it is. And right now, if I hit refresh, it'll actually update the information. If I were to change the tape out, I would refresh and it would change the style of tape right here as well. So I'm going to create, I've got a couple options. I've got this block 66 patch panel, faceplate. They all seem to have similar characteristics. I haven't really seen much of a difference between the three options, but they lay them out for you like that in case you don't know that a patch panel can be similar to a block, could be similar to a faceplate. But I'm sure there's little nuances that I'm missing, but... For this, I'm going to go into Patch Panel. Double click on that. The environment opens up with some default settings. The way I'm going to do this is I don't have the right width of tape. I have the 12 millimeter, but the, uh, the Mesa blocks would probably be better off with a 3 8 wide label or a 10 millimeter wide label for you metric folks. But just for the sake of an example, because I think this is fantastic, um, I'm just gonna do a quick label on the first input strip of my card here. So inside of these four little boxes here is where you go to manipulate a majority of the stuff here the characters the border um, here you can modify the margin here you can modify the length and you can set it to a fixed length or you can set it to floating length in certain cases but the patch panels actually go based on the port length here and i know that just by trial and error from yesterday that the mesa spaces the pins at 140 thousandths it's probably it's probably three and a half millimeter or something like that or probably three and a half millimeter three and a quarter millimeter it's, it's about it's about 140 thousandths the, the the printer itself only has a two-place decimal but this seems to have three or more But 0.14 gets me exactly what I need. I'm going to use six ports because each bank, like I said, is six. I'm going to do an alphanumeric sequence. 
and I'm going to rotate the text like that. This is where I had an issue with the actual unit, not an issue issue, but it, it won't let me do it in the software, but it'll let me do it here. Plus with this, with the software, I can use Windows fonts. I don't, I'm not limited to just the, the serif, serif and sans serif that they have in the, in the uh, unit itself. So I'm just going to go with standard font. Port length of 140, six ports, alphanumeric sequence. And then under, underneath the alphanumeric sequence box here, here's where I start doing my label labeling, if you will. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the AS1 to string. And the initial value I'm going to set to in. That's going to give me a label that says that these are all inputs. From there, I'm going to go to Add Sequence. I'm going to choose Numeric. And you see that automatically it creates a sequence for me. If I go to Initial Value, because of the orientation of where these blocks are, they actually go backwards. So instead of starting from one and working your way to six, or in my case, zero to five, you have to start at the higher number and then work your way down. So to work your way down, I'll set my initial value to five, and you'll see that it goes six, seven, eight, nine, ten. To reverse that, you go to the increment, you make that a minus. And now you can see it goes from five down to zero, but it doesn't have a space. If you want to add a space, the easiest way I found is just to go into the string and just put a space. You can do an add sequence. And then inside the add sequence, you can do what's called a word break. But the word break puts the, puts the value on another line. And I didn't like that. So I'm just going to go with the simple space. Whenever you want to delete any of these, you just hover over top and you'll see the little X. X marks the spot click on that and it goes away very intuitive so I've got the block that I want I'm going to go into my parameters again because I am more a fan of the vertical line not the rectangular frame I'm sure with the smaller tape I would like the I'd like the block a little bit better but the line seems to be good for what I'm doing here I could also do a tick mark do dotted line and again i could do the frame and that's pretty much it i've got my parameters all set up I've got my margin set to 150 because with this tape if you set the margins too small it it will hang a little itty bitty piece a little teeny tiny little itty bitty piece over the block and I like uh, I like to wrap it around a little bit so that it contacts the sides so that's really preference if you wanted to you could probably stick them on there and then just edge trim with an exacto knife if you wanted to but we don't like scissors and we don't like exacto knives here so I'm looking at uh, I was looking at some of the videos on YouTube and you could see right there no need we don't need Scissors. Hi, Melissa. We don't need scissors. So from here, all we do is just go over to print. Hit print. And print. There's a bunch of other options, but that's basically the gist of making a simple label. And there she chooches. Grab our label, and she looks pretty. Can't do this with one hand, so I'm going to stick this on, and I'll show you what it looks like. So I got it on, and if this thing would focus, 
Come on. There we go. So you can see I've got it on. It's not the it's not the correct size, like I said. But if I had the smaller one, the, the three eighth or ten millimeter wide, it would fit inside of the little channel there. It would look a little bit better. I'm gonna have to either order up or beg, beg, beg for some three eighth tape. But you can see, I mean, it fits on there nice. I overlap it, like I said, so that it contacts the sides. And it just adds a little bit of, it adds a little bit of panache to the, to the card, but it also labels it out nice. The newer Mesa cards are actually labeled very well. You can see right in here, it says N0, N1, N2, blah, 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 blah. But, I mean, I'm, I'm 41 and my eyes just are not what they used to be. So, it's just nice. And it's nice at glance, you know, you can... Take the, I could, they could take the connector, I could shove it in, and you could see that once it's in place, I mean, it looks, it looks nice. It looks great. Picture that all the way across and up the line here. So you could see that there's definitely a benefit to it, because when the card is mounted inside of the cabinet, then you'll be able to... Just kind of like glance over and say, okay, well, here's all my inputs, here's my outputs, and here's my step directions, encoder, blah, blah, blah. Like I said, the software, easy to use, pretty intuitive. A lot of different options, a lot of stuff that you can't do on the unit itself, but the unit itself is nice and portable, so you kind of take the go with the bad. Um, everything has been good, again. These these guys have been fantastic, and this thing is a wonderful unit. But the PC software definitely brings it to the next level. So that's uh, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in seeing more about the Epson Labelworks printer, let me know. I know uh, I know I kind of changed gears a little bit on the channel, but. You know, everything, everything has a place, and this right now has a, has a very important place for what I'm doing in my current projects with the school and stuff at home, so sorry, not sorry, you're going to be seeing some Epson content as well, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.